Welcome back to another episode of the Rock Your Comeback podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Eaton, and I'm here with our monthly glow up with Christy Forsyth. Hi, guys. Yeah. Um, Christy and I are coming at you monthly because we're gearing up for another retreat. So keep an eye out for that announcement. Um, but we thought in the meantime, why don't we help you guys glow up each month? So we are coming at you just talking about the energies and things that you can do to support yourself this month and to have your own glow up, whether that's internal or external, um, and to make your life the fucking bomb because who doesn't want that? Hell yeah. So how has this past week been for you just in terms of how you've been feeling the energy? <laughs> Is this one of those shows where I can take like a pass or? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing. I had a meltdown midweek and then I was fine the rest of the week, but it was just like Wednesday. I, I even like, I even texted Christy. I'm like, what the fuck is going on with the energy? Like, what, what is this? What is happening? Because I woke up just feeling like my entire body was buzzing from like 2am on. I just felt like all of this energy and I had been doing a lot of energy clearing on other people. Like I had a lot of sessions this week. So I was like, okay, maybe I just didn't get rid of the extra energy that I was dispelling from people, but it made me feel like really torn within myself. Like I felt like, like I couldn't land on any one decision for myself or for my life or for my direction. I just felt like this back and forth energy inside of me in every area of my life. And and it was making me feel fucking crazy. Like that's it. But, but by like, I think I messaged you at four and I was like, okay, it's gone now. It, it, and that's, there's nothing that makes me feel more absolutely batshit crazy than when energy happens like that for me, that it comes and it's really intense and then it's just gone. But that's what people don't understand is like that we're so impacted by energy all the time. And so when you start to just kind of adopt that mindset, like, okay, maybe why part of why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling is that I'm reacting to an energy around me, whether it's the collective energy, whether, whether it's the energy in a space, the energy of the people that you've surrounded yourself by. But when we start to look at the world like that, we start to just understand why we're feeling the way that we're feeling. And quite frankly, it makes you feel a little less crazy, in my opinion, too, because we essentially this week had a solar apocalypse almost. <laughs> it was sky. I know we were saying earlier, like, can we just blame shit on the sky to this week? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, so it's, it's magical what was happening in the sky this week, but at the same time, it's a lot on our bodies. So just for a frame of reference, I did a video on this the other day. So in 2021, we had two X-class solar flares, right? So X-class solar flares are the highest solar flares, the highest level of solar flares. So 2021, we had two. 2022, we had seven to in total for the whole year. 2023, we had 12. And then last week, over the course of under a week, we had 20. Seems right. Solar flares. And then we had like a shit ton of M-class solar flares too, right? So like we were just getting hit with all of this solar energy and that was connected with, with um, what was going on with people being able to see the Aurora Borealis, not me because I'm in upstate New York and it's cloudy as fuck every single time that I want to see an event in the sky. But some people got to see the magic in the sky. And so there was that, there was these geomagnetic storms and just a lot of energy. And what essentially is happening with the solar flares is that we are receiving light. We are absorbing more light because this is part of the planetary ascension. Planetary ascension basically is meaning that the planet is preparing and slowly but surely holding more light so that we can all receive more light. We can all receive more love so that we can operate at a higher frequency. But in order for us to live on what will become new earth, we also have to have our bodies prepared for that. So we got hit left and right with all of that stuff. And I just, like I said a little prayer before I hopped on here with you today, because I'm like, please God, just let me stay in my body today. <laughs> because I feel so floaty and so unfocused. The number of hours that I just have sat there staring at the wall <laughs> is ridiculous, like not productive right now because it's, it's hard 
to feel like I'm connected to my body right now, no matter how much I'm doing to try to stay grounded. I did a, a live video with somebody else last week and it was like so bad. I could not focus to save my life. We're going to just like erase that video because I could not focus at all. But so it's been like that for me and I've been feeling like these surges of energy and it made it kind of hard for me to sleep. And my kids have been wild, like just absolutely <laughs> like pray for me, pray for me. <laughs> because this argument that we got in over an ice cream truck was like out of control and 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 they just like kept pushing it and they were they just kept pushing me right so finally I got to the place where I felt completely angry and started to yell at them and they always start to laugh right when I yell because they always say that I yell like Minnie Mouse so I started to yell and then one of them looks at me and says I will not mirror your anger back at you mother oh <laughs> <laughs> that little motherfucker <laughs> oh, shit. I would have spoken like devil at that point straight like, oh. face straight face so it, it's been it's been a ride uh lots of other symptoms that a lot of people are feeling lots of stuff happening people have been feeling like anxious and feeling um, emotional a lot of emotions have been getting stirred up for people I just find with solar flares it's like a detox that comes so sometimes it's emotional sometimes it's physical if you can hear my throat is scratchy again because surprise surprise my, my throat is always scratchy when I'm detoxing I think it's important to like point out though that it looks different for everybody like most of my week was absolutely wonderful except for Wednesday and and that was like the day where it was like so you may have seen or felt that experience or not like or you may have felt really unfocused or not like that's the cool thing about like astrology that's the cool thing about life that's the cool thing about spirituality like no one group of people has the same things that they experience and it's all different based on where you're at in your life absolutely so for me one of the things that I experience when the energy when there's a lot of energy coming my way is I'll feel like little heart palpitations right so that's just one of the ways that I experience it but I think that what's important is to start to recognize and pay attention to how your body how your mind how, how you experience these kinds of energies because it's going to give you a heads up the next time that that's happening right and then you can go oh okay so I'm responding to some kind of energy and it gives you a way of recognizing what's happening for you I think it's good to know your baseline energy though too like when we're talking about the these types of things. Like I know that the energy that I was experiencing Wednesday was not typical for me. I think if I would have been in a different, like if that would have been back in January, I would have been like, Oh, well, this is just where I'm at. Like, this is where I'm at, but like, that's not where I had been at. So for me to feel so like torn and feel like felt so indecisive and felt so like, just not like, right. That for me was important to know my baseline to know where I'm at and to know what my energy feels like when it's not influenced by anything else so that I could recognize that it wasn't necessarily me and then you kind of just ride the wave of it like it is what it is maybe more intentional about grounding like uh, I know you you were like put on the you know Schumann res resonance like just different sound frequencies to help ground like there was just things that I was like okay I'm going to prioritize this in my day so I can get back in my body and back to my normal state but that's like the important part about energy of any kind is like knowing who you are knowing what your baseline energy is that in that season of your life, because like I said, January, I probably would have been like, oh, that makes sense because I'm just, it was a messy month. Um, but being in like a good frequency and then being like hit upside the head with feeling like so crazy or so like just not quite myself. Um, it's just a good red flag so that you can be like, oh, okay, well, I wasn't feeling that before. And I was feeling totally great yesterday. And now it's now it's a Friday and I feel totally fine. It's a great day. Like I know now that those things do impact me and that I can keep an eye out for them next time that they may come up and show up in different ways in my energy, but then they'll be gone as quick as they came. Absolutely. And we need that. We need that awareness because then what you do with that is you figure out what works for you right? Whether it's a frequency, whether it's to go for a walk or a hike or to take 
uh, an Epsom salt bath or like what there's a, an endless list of things that you can do to balance yourself out when you're processing a lot of energy and we're all built so differently. We're going to process it differently, but we're also going to need to address it differently. We all have different things that we need to release it or to integrate it. And so to have an awareness of both of those things give you the gives you the tools that you need to basically be an energetic surfer, right? To surf the wave of the energy because yeah, <laughs> we are all surfing the wave, whether you like it or not. And so it's helpful to have a sense of what works. I literally couldn't figure out the surfer hands. I was like <laughs> doing like sign language over here, trying to figure out. What are the surfer hands? I don't know. Is that right? Yeah. Intended. Well, you, guys can't, you guys can't see it unless you're watching this on video, but it's just envision what surfers do with their hands. That's you got it. You, and if I'm wrong, then you're envisioning the right thing. So we're all yeah. correct. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it has been, it has been, you know, it's been a challenging year for a lot of people. And I think we are making, I know we said this last week or last month, but like we are making our way out of it. It's just, we're riding that, we're riding that wave. But one of the things I was just talking about on my Friday live and the comeback club was like, this is a really good time to get to know your energy, but it's also a good time to get to know yourself, you know, different seasons of our life and different parts of us. Like they require different things. And so somebody, somebody asked the question of like, how do I start living a more authentic life? And then I was saying like, well, that depends on the season of life you're in. For me, three months ago, I was being a hermit. I like my hermit season. I'm a cancer. I like being at home. I like cooking long, slow meals. Like for me, forcing myself out into the public, <laughs> not the public, uh, forcing myself out into the public would have been more challenging. And, and I would have had a harder time with connecting and like trying to network. And if I would have forced myself to do that when I wasn't in that energy, it would have been very inauthentic. So in this season of my life, a couple months later, that's not how that looks for me. I'm trying to make as many connections as I can. I'm meeting up with all sorts of new people. We started like a new coffee thing once a month in the Charlotte community. And like, so I'm connecting with a ridiculous amount of people right now. I've got events coming up and, but if that's authentic to me in this season and a couple months ago, that wouldn't have been authentic to me. So sometimes we just have to feel into ourselves and where we're at and what we're needing and desiring in that moment to help us know what's authentic for us. Authentic just means being in alignment with wherever you're at. And giving permission to be wherever you're at. And I think that's a really key piece is that authenticity doesn't have to look the same from January to December. It might look different depending on what you're needing during that time period of your life. I don't even think we're the same people that we were in January. I don't even think I'm the same person that I was a month ago, right? We have been doing so much work as a collective. And so I feel like a lot of this energy right now too is in tuning in with ourselves and figuring out who we are authentically now because it's just been like peeling back the layers of an onion and learning about ourselves and connecting with parts of ourselves that we didn't even understand were there and releasing so many of the things that just never really were us or programming from outside of ourselves or things that we needed as armor for a period of time. But now I feel like we're in this place where we are being given the opportunity to get to know ourselves and to use that to figure out what's next for us and what we want and what we need. And that question of what do I need is so key always in helping you to understand who you are and where you're going and what you want. So I love that question. I think it's the most important question to, for us to be asking ourselves. And I think the process, I know we were just talking about how energy impacts people differently, but the process of figuring out like what your authentic version of yourself is personal and it's individual. And I think that that can be really, really important. I was saying, um, on the comeback club, I'm, I'm working on something right now. And my, my entire focus is just being on the now moment. Like I'm just flowing. Like I have desires and I have dreams and goals, but I'm not pushing anything very hard. I'm just trying to see where each next moment is leading me. 
and who I'm connecting with and what the invitations are that I'm getting and like just feeling through all of these in a way that's not calculated in a way that's not like I have to know what's coming next like I'm just in this space of trying new things I've been taking a pottery wheel class I'm making a lot of bowls I have Christy when you come visit me I'm gonna give you a Nicole eat an original bowl uh, my teacher says they're very organic and I think you're going to like them a lot. Um, but I'm just doing things where I'm just super in the present moment. I'm not pushing in ways that I like have in the past. You know what I mean? And in part of me is like, should I be like, am I fucking my life up by not pushing harder in certain ways? But like, but also that's not what I'm feeling right now. What I'm feeling is like, I just want to have as much fun, as much joy, as much like trying new things I want live music in my life and I'm trying to prioritize the things that bring me joy and honestly like it's also bringing me money um like as I'm prioritizing like just having more fun or trying new things or like letting myself just live in the moment like I'm just booking sessions left and right and I'm you know it's just easy stuff that I'm just like where did these people come from you know like it, and it's pretty cool to have to see that happening that like as I'm doing that like the universe is showing me like here you've been wanting this stuff and you were pushing so hard for last year and here it is now like I don't know it's pretty cool well that's it though when you're pushing for it I think it makes it harder for it to come in right so I think that you're exactly in alignment with what you're meant to be doing and and that's very much the collective energy too like you use the word easy and I've been talking about ease for a little while that we're being called now to lean into that ease like it doesn't have to be so hard and I think when you're approaching it the way that you are where it's just allowing that to unfold. I know you're like me, like we're both very intentional. We put our intentions out there. We do uh, focused forms of manifestation, but I really love this idea of the set it and forget it technique where it's like, let me set my intentions and then let me hand that up and trust that I'm going to be led. So same, I've been in that place where it's just like, okay, I'm going to just let myself really follow this flow and see where it's taking me. I've made my intentions known, but maybe God has different intentions for me, or maybe God has better intentions for me. And so I'm just kind of allowing myself to ride this ride and, and where it's taking me and letting it be led. And it's pretty magical. I just think it's more fun that way. And, and you know, like I just, there's so many stories that are told to especially entrepreneurs about like what you should be doing. And I think that's true for moms. I think that's true for dads. I think that's true for anybody in any kind of role that there's things that you feel pressured to be doing. And I think this is the season where you step back. And it's funny because like, again, part of me feels maybe guilty. Like, you know, like part of me feels like I sh I sh like I should be doing something, but like, honestly, I do feel called to rest more. I actually got this. Oh my God. Wait till you see it. Um, I got this like neck massager off a TikTok shop. And it's like, what are those like shiatsu thing, but it heats up and you put your arms in it. So I look like a little T-Rex while I'm doing it. Cause it's like, you weight it down with your arms and it's, and I just, I'll probably stay there for like at least a couple months, like in my little neck massage corner because I have to like it's plugged into the wall so I have to like back up into it but um that's all I really want to do with my life I want to make shitty pottery and I and I want my neck massage and I want to do aerial and I want to meet a bunch of people and then talk about what I'm doing and that's really my um, my entire life right now <laughs> <laughs> but haven't you noticed and I know this is true for me that when I'm focused on just like living and enjoying and doing what I want to be doing, that that's where all the good stuff hits anyway. By the way, I'd like for you to use the massager during our next recording, please. <laughs> I thought about it. I genuinely did, but I'm not close enough to an outlet. So you're going to have to see it in person when you come visit me. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's the... <laughs> magical I'll put a link to it in my in the show notes guys because you're I, I don't I'm not making any money off this you just have to get it it's worth it it's getting all the knots I don't know that's how I'm living my life this this month is to just hype up um good neck massaging products but 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm here for the now moment and I'm here for like feeling into life instead of trying to plan for it. I think that's the phase we're in right now is to like still on this tail end of resting, still on this tail end of just uh, figuring out who we are on the other side of this. I was saying to a lot of people that April felt like a rebirth um, for a lot of my clients. That was kind of like something shed, something new came up. And so I think like we're still little babies learning to walk. And, you know, and it's a little wobbly and we're not really sure, but everything's kind of wonderful at the same time. And like, we're being supported and we're being taken care of, but like, it, it may feel like things are new and you're going to want to like, when things are new, our brain wants to grasp onto what we were doing, even if it wasn't working. So when we're in a new phase, we kind of just have to go with the flow and look at it in awe and be like, oh, I am in a brand new phase of my life. I've never been here before. I wonder what is here for me. And I think that when we're open to it and we let ourselves choose to move differently throughout our lives, it's going to help to support that energy. I really feel like the month of May is such a lucky month. And in spite of there being intensity with the solar flare, like this is all good stuff. Like we're processing really good energy that is supporting us in operating from higher frequency, which is ultimately going to bring in even greater things into our lives and helping us to feel even better as well. But when we're choosing to lean into these new beginnings, it's like, we want to make sure that we are moving differently, making different choices. And, you know, of course, choosing the things that have worked for us, that do work for us, but also that willingness to be open to doing things in a different way. Now, I don't always love that. That's not my favorite. <laughs> I'm a very routine person, but I have been doing that and, and really trying to approach things differently, even like driving a different way than I would typically drive to the typical places that I would go and things like that. I'm just trying to like mix it up, shake it up so that my experience can be new and fresh and support me in seeing things from new and fresh perspectives and continue to support me in making different choices moving forward too that are going to support this new phase that I'm experiencing in my life. I think the thing that I'm learning too is that I might not know why I'm where I'm at until after I've been there. And like just even this pottery class, like I did not sign up for this pottery class. One of my friends signed me up and we had been on a wait list for months and then they called and they're like, you're off the wait list, but she was in London. So they were like, we're not saving your spot for the week. And so I was like, do I go like, I, I, I mean, I don't, I'm not really artistic. I'm a writer, but I don't like create art. And, um, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go to one class and just see what I think. And it's so much fun. And I'm so bad at it. And like, the thing is, is like, actually I'm not. I take that back. I'm doing okay. I've only had two classes and I'm doing, I have a, I have like seven bowls. I have so many bowls. <laughs> but when you say bowls, are these like bowls that you eat out of or bowls that you smoke out of? No, that would be a more fun pottery class. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, if you ever come, you can make whatever you want. I think I even made maybe a mug. Maybe one is going to be a mug. I don't know. But like, but I just was like, oh, I actually could spend all day here doing this with my hands. Forget, I'm like, Cameron told me my daughter is 16 and she used to take pottery at this place. And she was like, I was like, do I have like, should I wear old clothes? And she's like, no, you're, you're not going to get that messy. Like, it's a pretty easy thing. And I'm like covered head to toe in clay, like my entire, like down to my arms, my shirt, my pants, like just covered in clay. Um, but the, but my point is, is like, I'm there and I'm like connecting and it's all these older women. And it's, it's like, honestly, the most safe, loving little spot you'll ever see is it's just all these older women talking about life and just making jokes and all sorts of things. And it just feels so nice to be there. Like, I can't even put into words how nice it feels to be there. So like, whether I make 87 freaking bowls because I literally can't make anything else or not like or like I end up being okay at this like I don't even care what the outcome is like I'm in a really safe beautiful spot and I'm doing something 
that's new to me that I'm like proving to myself that I like can figure it out and that's cool yeah it's so cool and it's so fun and I think that we're in a time where if we've not already started to learn something new whether that's for fun or um, to build on our knowledge base that we really should be paying attention to if there's a call for that like I've started to take some astrology classes so that's been my new fun thing and I'm having the best time with it and it's a lot of information to process but it's just like it's so much fun I think that's the thing too is like finding the things that like that light you up even if it's just a little pull like again I was not supposed to be in this pottery class alone like I was I was supposed to go with my friends like this was just like an accident that I was there but I think if I was with my friends I wouldn't be connecting with all these other women I probably would have just be talking to cat and calling it a day like I think there was intention for putting me there at all and I think there was intention for putting me there by myself so like sometimes those little nudges or pulls or I guess I'm just going to go and see what it has to offer can be a really powerful place to start something new definitely and and to go and to see what life has to offer right now I think that's the vibe right? To get out there, to have the experiences that you're feeling pulled to have, and to let this energy expand you, expand your life, expand your growth, whatever is wanting to be expanded. I feel like 2024 is such a year of expansion, if we allow it. I really like intuitively like projecting into this year with almost every client. I felt like so good about it. And I think I was really, really thrown off when like my year started off so crappy and a lot of people's years started off so crappy. Like I was like, I guess I read that wrong. But like, the thing is, is like, I really felt like the second half of the year was where the magic happened. So I think that sometimes to build something incredible, we have to let certain things fall apart and we have to be willing to reset our foundation maybe a little differently than we wanted or differently than we planned um and then we get to build something fresh and new from there but I think that the the shaking up of the foundation was probably the most important part to get you on track to doing the things that you're meant to do to clearing out your intuition so that you can know what you're feeling called to do and I think this is the season this is the month this is your may glow up to surrender a little bit and to step into being willing to be guided, being open to see what's possible, following those little sparks and little nudges and not pressuring yourself into being anything that you don't feel called to be anymore. Right. Let it glow you up and, and trust the process of all this. Again, if we've allowed it, we are not the same people that we were in January of 2024. Not even close. Facts, facts. <laughs> <laughs> we're not living the same lives we're not yeah just and not. as much as you're like oh January that was terrible right do you are, are you looking at that I think, and think, I think about January. <laughs> <laughs> but can you see like can you look at that I can look at that for me and just go oh okay so that led me to this and that led me to and I'm already connecting some of those dots where it's just like these parts of myself that I have allowed to be dormant within me are starting to go, oh, I want to come out and play. I want to come out and experience life and, and lead part of your process with you. And it's, it's really, really cool. Like these facets of myself that I didn't even really understand existed are coming to the surface. I feel so much more free and so much more like authentic, even in the ways I'm communicating with people, like it's just more straightforward. And, and honestly, like, I guess there was part of me where my heart had gotten a little hardened. And and I think there were things within like my family that I didn't want to deal with. And I really closed off doors, um, instead of putting in screens. And so I realized like, you know, there were things that had popped up and I was like, God, if something happened to that person, would I be okay with how I have been? Um, yes, I need to protect my peace, but how do I do that in a way that like, when the time comes that I feel like I was still my open hearted, loving self and not this cut off cold version of myself, because I think that boundaries for me sometimes go into that direction where I'm just like, wipe my hands clean and never again. And like, 
I'm just being more mindful of like, I'm an open hearted person. And I don't know if I've been that consistently, if I've been fully myself. So I feel like for me, like my heart is opening a lot more um, in ways that uh, it feels so nice and good and freeing. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's caused me to reflect a lot on my role in things, my, who I am in the world and making sure that I'm so true to myself in those regards, because I think I thought I was being true to myself. And if I really reflect on it, I think I was being a very protected version of myself. Yeah. Or when I was talking about releasing the layers of the onion, right, that's part of it. We're letting down our armor or there's a call for us to let down our armor and we get to choose what we want to do with that. But I think the journey is showing us where we want to be a better version of ourselves. And if we just listen to that and tune into that, it's showing us every step of the way. That's what we're here to do. We're on a learning journey. And so if we allow it, it's going to te keep teaching us. It's going to keep showing us. We're being led every single step of the way. Yeah. You know, and like part of me is thinking like, am I going to have a vulnerability hangover when I go to post this? Because I've shared so much about like the ways I've struggled this year. But the reality is, is that no matter how, no matter how much work you do, there's always work to be done. And reflection is your best friend. And recognition and I think that if this podcast gives anybody else permission to like look at what who they want to be in the world and if they are actually being that person like I think that this is worth the share I guess it's always worth the share that's I mean that's when I say that there are parts facets of myself that are are coming forward there are part of that is like on the other side of just like dealing with several years of heartbreak, heartache, that kind of stuff. Right. And there was like years worth of healing from relationships that there was a lot of difficulties and things that I allowed within those relationships. But it, I, I now feel like as much as it's uncomfortable, I feel like I'm ready to really let people see me and who I am, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. And, and to just let that be. And I trust that the people who are meant to connect with me are going to connect with me and uh, that there isn't this need to be perfect or for anything that I present to be perfect. It's just like just letting it be what it wants to be. And so like that's been what's call been calling at my heart lately. And I feel like I've worked on this healing over the past few years so much that it's allowed me to get to that place where I can do that now. Like I'm, I'm finally ready for that, I guess. Yay. Yeah. I always love those moments where you're like, yeah, no way. I'm good. Like that's like an exhale, you know, like okay. yeah. we've done, like we've, we've navigated that and, and here we are. Like we talk about the process a lot, but we don't talk about the, like that moment where you're like, this shit doesn't bother me anymore. You know, like we talk about the process so much, but there's always that moment where it's like, you recognize that you're not thinking about that anymore. You're not having to focus on it anymore. You're not having to do anything intentional to like make it better or make it feel better. And I think like, that's such a beautiful underrated high five moment. Like we should have parties for that instead of like bridal showers, honestly, because that's the shit. That's the moment where it's like, oh, I did it. And I don't ever think like when people are like, oh, I'm healed now. Like I never will ever, you'll never catch me saying that. But the process of like recognizing that you don't do the shit you used to do and you're not even willing or open to it at this point, if it came to you, you'd be like, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? Like if you have that moment where you're just like, oh, okay, we're good. Like that's a power moment. That's a moment to celebrate. Yep. Those moments where in the past that would have a hundred percent triggered you. And then you realize like that same thing happened that in the past would have triggered you, but it didn't, you know, you didn't have a reaction or maybe you didn't even notice. I love that one. I, I realized hours later, like, like, Oh, that in the past would have, I would have been a mess over. And now I, I didn't even notice until hours later. That's honestly one of my favorite parts about like working with people and doing intuitive therapy is because like, sometimes I'll be like, like you a year ago in the same position would have like lost your shit, you know, like 
having the ability to recognize people's patterns and see them and, and not see them re-engage with them is like one of the coolest things about working with people in general is like you get to see like their progress in ways that they're not seeing it because they forgot because they just aren't that person anymore. Right. Yep. And, and this process, I'm sure you're seeing that too. It's like rapid now. It's just like people are changing so much. People are so ready to change. And well, I say change, right? But it's not really change. It's really like they're connecting more and more with who they are and releasing the stuff that doesn't align for them anymore. Uh, but it looks like change. It looks like progress because it is. I think this is like a perfect place to end. And um, you guys are going to want to catch this monthly. So make sure you look out for the glow up episodes with Christy just Christy, Madonna like Christy, um, <laughs> and make sure to connect with us. We both have um, online memberships and I will post all of our information in the show notes. Do you have anything special you want to add in? Just sending you all love. Let this be an adventure. I think that this is exciting. The, the end of May, I think moving into the rest of the year, we have a lot to look forward to. So keep your eyes open for that. Keep watching for that and, and be open to all of it. And I love you all. We love you. We'll catch you next time.